The basketball addicts are back at it, and this time we're talking, um, I guess, not necessarily suffragists, but someone who is putting on for her sex, Kelly Kroskopoff, the first female assistant general manager in the NBA, and we make it a point on this show, whenever there's a first in any regard, to kind of highlight it and cover it, because we know, especially here in Canada, we're a bit further removed from the culture, and we want these young people here to understand that this league is very embracing of all different types, walks, lives. We'll start with the lady on the panel. How big is this for young women? You, you, you're a lady in the game. How... Is this, does this resonate across the board? I think it's fantastic and awesome. Of course it is. I think it gives um, young women something tangible now that's actually happened. At the same time, without saying she or a woman, this is someone who has been a GM and president for 17 years that's taken a, an organization to 13 playoff appearances, three finals. When this has winning. nothing to... I mean, yeah, at some point you go, all right, it's great she's a female. At the same time, she's earned her right to be here. She's worked for two decades with the Pacers' owner. So is it about a woman or is it just about the right person to get this job? And I think at some point, we and she has said it all week in her press conferences, basketball is basketball. So yes, it's great for young women. It's great for females. At the same time, let's move forward and just say, this was the right freaking person to get the job. Thank you. All right. I, actually, I'm in total agreement, but here's where we're going to throw the, the wrench in the system. What do we think as a collective group, and you can all answer individually, is going to happen first? A female straight-up GM or a female coach which is more likely i think gm because there's more women in front offices across the nba than there is on the bench it's just it's by process of elimination it's pure mm -hmm. math right stole like, my answer I, I'm, I'm actually <laughs> i'm actually surprised there isn't another you know female assistant general manager in the league right now but i think amy said it, it's, it's not about you know gender here it's about who's most capable for the job if you have the resume you have the experience you have the wherewithal then it doesn't really matter and i'm looking forward to a day when we don't have to celebrate first like this because i, I feel like we're already past that but apparently we're not right i don't so. think we are i, I, I don't think say, we are no we're not past it. we should be i'm sorry becky hammond should be up for consideration for a head coach job she, she, she was this summer but she was she should and uh, but you know, when she was interviewing for Milwaukee, and some people were calling it a, a social experiment. Are you kidding me? She played at the highest level, successful. She was a point guard. She was the biggest leader. Yeah, you I think it's equal, team. though? Like, not, not to, to play devil's advocate, is it apples and oranges, or is it oranges and oranges? Like, a, a female coach, is there any... Could you see any, like, what's stopping it? What is right. what is what does the old guard believe or hold on to that would prevent someone from saying, Beck, Cam, because, here's an NBA Because match. it's change, it's different, people are just scared see, of that. See, I, I don't think it's that. I, I don't, uh, the, the NBA is the most progressive of any professional sporting league out there. Yeah. If there's any league that's going to happen, it's here. I just think it's about a crude experience. Women's basketball is different than men's basketball. Okay, but Mark... Just like women's baseball is different than men's baseball across yeah. the board. And when you're in the game and you grow up on the men's side or the women's side, you're Amy, before I let you rebut, because in that area. You, that's what you're here for? Dan has to say yeah, something in this that. segment. I actually, I think I have something to add. And <laughs> I was going to agree with you. I, I kind of do. But to play devil's advocate, I'm going to say there's going to be a coach first. And here's why. There's a lot of coaches, women coaches, in the women's college game. Okay, and I think there's going to be a breakthrough out of that. It, it could be someone like Don Staley, who I believe is the coach at South Carolina and surprise people. Th there's going to be somebody in the college game who breaks through, builds the, the next dynasty. I mean, if there was a Pat Summit of today, you'd have to consider that person now sure. as possibly the head coach. And so you have 200 universities in the United States competing somewhere there's going to be a prospect among that pool of coaches. But, but how many women coaches are in the NCAA men's men's game right now? Oh, like zero. Said, like, oh, it's zero. Like... Well, let me throw something else at Amy, because um, I, think, I think this is a wide breath conversation. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of losing my train of thought here, because I want to be sensitive to the subject. But if we take a, a step back, did Adam Silver not kind of um, the mandate especially after the situation in Dallas, that there be more women in, in, in front office positions. So w where's the argument of tokenism versus actually giving women respect? Do you, do you see that line yet? If you go talk to these women in these positions... Well, and, I don't think the women are the no, problem. No, no, I think no. it's other people, no? Kill, let me finish. Yeah. 
<laughs> go. If you go talk to them and they say, uh, I got my job because I'm a woman, that's the bigger slap in the face than not getting a job 100%. because you're a woman. Because yep. they've put the time in. And again, if you take female or you look at what is or is not in between their legs, they deserve those jobs. So, I mean, I just, I don't like that idea that people are getting, there is this a billion dollar entity. I mean, there's yep. so much wealth in the game. Um, in different ways, marketing, you can say, you know, front office, coaches, players, broadcasters. So if you're limiting it and we're still there, then, I mean, it's a disrespect to the game and it, it sucks. And so I think it's cool to see these women get Yeah, and, and look, look, like, there's no doubt about it. Women need to work harder. And I think that having a, an alternative perspective, not just women, like having people from all over the world, from different places, people with different backgrounds and experiences will end up coming up with the best end product. But when it's a men's sport played by men that's typically being coached by men all the way up, women, women have to work harder to break through those ranks. It's just the way that it's always, it's going to be, right? It's just by the nature of it. But it's, so. it's happening. I mean, it's happening, yeah, 100%. We're talking about it right now on the show. But you go back to Becky Hammond, I, I'm, a, I'm a Becky Hammond fan, if you can't tell. But, I mean, you look at someone like Mark Jackson or Steve Kerr, how much coaching experience do they have before they get their head coaching job? I mean, Becky Hammond is with Popovich. But, there's a, but, but, is, but they did play in that yeah. same league. Yeah, and at, you know, the, and at the same time. But that's under control. I, 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 there, there's, before, there's a lot of men coaches who <laughs> grind it out. Nick Nurse is the perfect example. He had to go all across the world, multiple G League stops, just to get his first shot in the game. So, men, women, it's a difficult grind to yeah. reach that summit. And Becky's doing the and right there thing. there are women right. that are grinding. Let me, let, me, let me grab the horns of this one and say, I agree with you totally. But I also don't believe it's apples and apples. I think it's a little bit different, but I'm so happy this is happening. But let's talk specifically about the team that Ms. Kroskopoff will be responsible for helping restructure. And that's this Indiana Pacers team. A little while ago, they were one of the hotter teams. They've been playing well under the radar a bit. They have the Eastern Conference play player of the week in Thad Young. Wow. Mm -hmm. And they've been rolling recently. Um, do you, like, are we are we pulling for this team? Do we buy that they've actually found something with Vic Oladipo, or is this a mirage, Dan Glavin? Well, they're an, they're an excellent team. They're the best defensive it's, team oh, in man, the league. You, you upset me when you do this. Do you believe they're an excellent team? <laughs> what's your question? Do you what's believe that this No, model? they're not going to win. They're That's not. the answer right there. Thank you. Go with it. We good? Yeah, we're good. Okay, calm down. I'll give you my answer. <laughs> They're not going to the NBA Finals, okay? They're, they're going to challenge anybody in a series. They might make the East Finals, but no, they're a step away from getting to the NBA Finals because they don't have that super elite player that we've talked about so many times over the years. But they're a great team. They're very likely going to finish in the top four in the East. I would they're going to win 50 team. plus great. games. They deserve a lot of respect. Tonight, great team is the wrong word. You need a couple more shooters on that team, but you're right. They're the best defensive team in the league. But they don't have a Giannis, they don't have a Kawhi, yep. they, they don't yep. have a Kyrie. Like, That's not great. This is, what, this is what separates the team. So they are what they are. And unless we see Reggie Miller and Rick Smiths and the Davis brothers walk through that Run door, they're going to be the lower <laughs> tier of playoff teams in the Eastern Conference. I agree with G Wheels. Still more to come here on Canada's Home for Talking Hoops. Um, we are talking about this. It's called a big trade. I don't think it's a big trade. We'll find out how it Excuse plays me. out. Oubre for Ariza. Why are people tweeting about this? This is like a forget about it moment, personally. I don't know. More basketball when we return. Hang out!